so we are going to uh, move on, right? So you remember this, like we were asking you what your problem is and you write it down, um, like, uh, and it can be anything, right? So we have already mentioned, it can be like, you know, a mental health issue, it can be a um, like work-related issue, it can be a relationship issue, it can be like a health issue, uh, it can be an emotional uh, issue, uh, what have you. Uh, so the first key idea, right, that we want you to learn is that every problem, every challenge that you face in life can be translated into something different. What are we translating your problems into? We are translating your problem, whatever that is, into a set of achievable goals. All right, uh, how are we gonna do that? I'm gonna give you an example, uh, but uh, you'll hear many, many of these examples later, and I will explain uh, the, the reasoning behind, right? So one example is that like, uh, I have an addiction issue, uh, and I've been struggling with it uh, for decades. Uh, and it is my problem. So, and then when you look at this um, statement, okay, translate your problem into achievable goals, you go, oh, no, maybe not, because you know a lot of people have told me right, to do this and then I can like quit uh, drinking or I can quit doing drugs or I can quit like, you know, um, you know, being overly dependent on the internet or I can stop like this uh, uh, compulsive gambling. Uh, that is actually not translating your problem into achievable goals because, you know, uh, those goals, you probably have tried it before, right? <laughs> not achievable. Uh, or very few people uh, can achieve them. So when we say translating your problem into achievable, goal, uh, achievable goals, it is not something that, that simple. Like when I have a drinking problem, then my goal is to stop drinking. Uh, when I have like a... Uh, a, a mental health issue, like say I'm feeling depressed, the goal is like to not feel depressed. Uh, no, not like that. Uh, but eventually, right, you'll get there, right? But that is not how you set your goals because like these kind of goals like might sound very attractive, but you probably have tried it before. Um, it doesn't really work well. So the first step, for you to get to goals that are more likely to be achievable is for you to take on what we call the N3C perspective. It is a way to translate your problem, uh, not in the like common sense, straightforward manner, but we're taking you like a little bit deeper uh, into understanding what your question, what your problem, what your challenge might be. So the N3C perspective. I'm going to go through them very briefly. You will be hearing this like dozens of times when you're uh, going through this SSLD learning process. I just want to tell you, yes, it may sound like, you know, is, is this program going to be very repetitive? Uh, well, the honest answer is yes. Like a lot of ideas uh, will get repeated. But like, have you ever learned uh, something with your body? Like, have you ever learned to play music, uh, you know, or martial arts or dancing? So what happens? Uh, if you want to be really good at any skill, you repeat that many, 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 many times. But that is not called repetition. That is called drilling. This is called practice, uh, you know, uh, or exercise, you know. So, uh, and it is called training uh, so that you get better and better uh, at whatever you're learning. So yes, if you ask me like, well, why like, will these ideas be repeated? Yes, they will be uh, many times. But each time when we repeat this idea, you will have a chance to gain a deeper understanding and connecting it better to your own lived experience. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so let us start with this, right? So now think of a problem, right? We said that you have to start this learning process with a problem. So you, I don't know what your problem is, you know, right? So you start thinking about a problem. So basically, 
when you think of your problem, we want you to look at your problem and see what your problem is telling you with regard to the N3C. N stands for needs. The three Cs are circumstances, characteristics, and capacity. So I'm just like using one example. So I have a drinking problem. So what needs are not met when I have a drinking problem? Well, a lot of people will point to, you know, what this drinking problem is doing to you. Uh, in SSLD, we don't ask that. Well, you already know what it's doing to you. Like you, 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 you lose your friends, you, 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 you lose the trust of your family members, you disappoint them, you embarrass them, uh, and uh, when you're drunk, you sometimes uh, uh, do things that you're not proud of. So we already know those, right? You don't have to tell us about those, right? And those are not really helpful. Uh, we are asking, what needs are not met. So you, as a person with a drinking problem, you're asking yourself, what needs in my life are not met? You know, if I've lost a relationship, then my need for affiliation, my need for attachment, for significant emotional connection or intimacy, that need is not met. But how come I allow myself right, to let drinking you know, get into this and so that this need is not met? Like I, I, I lost my job, right? So what are the needs that are not met? Like my need to have an income to provide me with like the necessities in life, that need is not met. Or well, sometimes what is more important that you're losing uh, in the job is not just the money, uh, but your status, your position, uh, in the in the social order, it also you also uh, you would also lose a structure in your life, right? and so you do not know like how to spend your time, right? So you also lose a, a sense of purpose, right? Um, so those are the things that you need, right? But that hasn't got to the core of the issue because you start drinking for a good reason. You know, like some people started to drink because they're, they have pain that they need to manage. Some people started drinking because, right, there were like immense stress that they have to cope with. Some people started drinking when they feel like threatened, frightened, insecure. And this drinking somehow like eased out this like uncomfortable and pleasant feelings. Some people started to drink to get accepted by people, uh, to get included in certain social groups or social circles. So like you may have like 200 people with like drinking problems, but they actually do not have the same problem. They're all drinking, but they do not all have the same problem because they are all using drinking to address different sets of needs. Are you following me here? So the drinking is not the problem, right? Not knowing what your needs are is the problem. So the first step you want to learn using SSLD on any of the problem that you're dealing with, right? Is you ask yourself, this is the problem I have, what needs are not met? If you're stuck in an unhappy relationship, what needs are not met? What well, do some people, it can be like very simple. My, my need for safety uh, is not met because I get hurt physically. Some, for some people, uh, my need for uh, accomplishment and achievement is not met because my partner keeps uh, putting me down, discouraging me, like uh, uh, preventing, blocking me from developing my potentials and doing things that I really like. Uh, for some of us, right? Uh, I'm in a relationship, but I can never feel understood. I never feel intimate to this person. I never feel that I'm accepted for who I am and what I stand for. So my intimacy needs are not met, right? For some of us, you know, your sexual needs are not met. Uh, for some of us, it can be that your financial needs are not met. So we are all in 
a difficult relationship, but like the needs that are not met again can be very different. You know, some people have a very low level of need for like profound, deep uh, communications, right? Conversations. Some people would be happy if we can just like ha spend a lot of time having fun together, traveling and doing that. Some people would never get satisfied with those. Like they, they want to have, you know, like some deep level uh, engagement. Uh, so like we have different needs, right? So when we have the same problem, remember, we have different needs. So focusing on the problem usually doesn't solve the problem, but focusing on the needs would give you a better chance uh, because what your long-term goals would be is to find an effective strategy that would address all your unmet needs given your problem, right? And maybe those are the unmet needs that got you into this problem in the first place. So are you okay now with the needs piece? All right, then, you know, when you're looking at your problem, you have to also consider your current circumstances. And I emphasize perceived circumstances. Okay, so why do I emphasize perceived? Well, because like people in the same situation, they do not experience the same circumstances, right? We have, I don't know how many people uh, using this health help program they're in the same situation. The situation is like we are taking the self-help self -help program, but are we all in the same circumstances? No, we're not, right? Some people were in here, right? Just to, um, uh, out of curiosity, some people have like a lot of free time and then they say, well, it might not be a bad idea to learn a few things uh, and, and to self-improve. Some of us are doing this uh, because we have like a pressing crisis and we need to find a solution soon. Uh, some of us are, are putting a lot of uh, um, uh, emotional investment in this because like this is sort of like my last hope. But some people uh, don't really care that much, you know, like I just want to like see what this like Asian looking man uh, has to say uh, regarding things, right? So these are fine, right? Uh, but the key point is, right, when people are in the same environment, they do not experience the same circumstances, right? Even when you have like a couple in an intimate relationship, say for example, going to a concert together, do they necessarily experience the same thing? No, right? Uh, the same piece of music that they were both very excited about. Oh, you know, this is a, this is the, the piece of music um, that that we shared when we first fell in love. Well, even then, you know, the detail associations, the kind of emotional arousal, uh, there are like a lot of similarities, but like there can still be differences. Uh, and one partner, for example, maybe having a headache on that particular evening. So the experience was sort of like uh, influenced by that. Another partner may have like a, uh, an ill parent uh, in the hospital. Uh, so although uh, he or she is enjoying the concert a lot, uh, this like nagging feeling in the background would like pop out every now and then. So they're in the same environment, they're sitting in the same concert, but they do not experience exactly the same circumstances. So you probably get the idea. So circumstances is more person specific, more personalized, more individualized, right? Okay. All right, so let us talk about characteristics. So our characteristics, right, includes uh, all the qualities that we have uh, as a human being. So say for example, like looking Asian, having black hair, uh, that's part of my characteristics. And you may have like different hair, <laughs> uh, you may look different. Uh, and then like our height, body build, and, and uh, our constitution, you know, like physiological constitution, including our genetics, our DNA, uh, can be different, right? Um, 
I, I have a very good sleep pattern. Uh, and that is my characteristics, but some people uh, can be easily disturbed when they sleep. Uh, when you measure the serotonin or dopamine level in our brain, we may have like very different levels uh, of this substance in our uh, central nervous system. So all these are characteristics. We can also have like very different like psychological characteristics. Uh, people can be introverted, extroverted. People uh, can be like uh, risk aversive people. Some people may actually be like seeking out like novel stimulations uh, and uh, they take a lot of risks. Some people enjoy adventure, some people like they, they hate adventure, they want order, stability, predictability, and control. So these personal preferences, values, personalities, all of these are your characteristics. We can also be talking about social characteristics, which would uh, include things like, you know, your social economic status, your position in society, your social network, you know, uh, the people you hang out with, uh, the communities you belong to. Uh, those are your social characteristics, like, you know, the the political party you, you vote for, uh, these are your social political characteristics. And we can also be talking about your uh, consumption pattern as a consumer, those are your characteristics. So basically your characteristics are all these qualities uh, who, that brought together define who you are. So huge, right? So this is why when we are seeing people with the same problem, if we do not understand the individual characteristics, uh, we're not <clears throat> getting the whole picture. And we also uh, run the risk of stereotyping. So if you think that, well, everyone with an eating disorder are the same, or like everyone with a, um, a drinking problem, they are the same. Uh, if like everyone who has a depression, uh, they are all the same. They all have the same characteristics. That is simply wrong, right? If you take 100 individuals um, experiencing depression, uh, they all have very different personal characteristics. There may be something in common. They may be like, they generally have like lower levels of serotonin in the brain, but uh, <clears throat> some of them may be like, uh, uh, you may have a high percentage of them being uh, generally pessimistic, but they all have very different personal characteristics. All right, and now I'm going to talk about <clears throat> capacity. Capacity is tricky because uh, capacity <clears throat> actually is characteristics. So what am I talking about? Okay, let me give you an example, right? Um, Spanish is the only language you speak. So that is your characteristics, right? Uh, and you're not, you may not like think about it much, right? But for someone like me who doesn't speak Spanish, uh, if I get into a Spanish speaking country, right? To me, being able to speak Spanish is a very variable capacity, you know? Uh, I'll give you another example. Uh, how good are you at like um, identifying uh, footprints of animals? Well, I'm not, right? So we don't care if you're living in the city. But just think of that. Like if we're all like trapped in a, in a jungle somewhere, right? And we are struggling for survival, that ability, right, that characteristics of being sensitive uh, and being able to tell the difference will, will become a very valuable capacity. So say for example, if you have like strong muscles uh, and you can lift heavy weights, um, well, in most like contemporary urban situations, uh, that characteristics is not highly valued, right? Unless you want to uh, be a professional like weight lifter or like you're, uh, uh, you're in, the, like in the construction or moving business, then it, it may help you. But for most people, we just say, oh, uh, he has strong muscles or she has strong muscles. And that is your characteristics. So what is the difference between the capacity and the characteristics? A capacity is a characteristic that is valued in your current circumstances, right? 
that would increase your probability of addressing your needs. I'm repeating this, All right? What is a capacity? A capacity is a characteristic that in your current circumstances will increase your probability of getting your needs met, right? So otherwise, like that characteristics is not, it's just a characteristic, it is not a capacity, right? So you may be like a very handsome or attractive person, right? And that is your characteristic and it will up your chance, right, of getting your needs met, right, in your in certain social circumstances, right, in a job interview, for example, or you go into a party. But if your circumstances is like running away from a bear, uh, then this like being handsome and being uh, attractive will not be a capacity uh, because it doesn't up uh, your uh, chance of like getting your needs. That is, in this case, survival met. Right? What will be a capacity? Well, muscular strength, agility, you know, energy, stamina, right? If you can outrun the bear, you can climb up the tree faster than the bear could. Uh, so, so you understand, right? So what is it, what, the difference between the uh, characteristics and capacity? But why are we making such a big fuss over capacity? And this is like one very important lesson about SSLD. And more importantly, even if you don't care about SSLD, if you've not learned anything from this self-help program, if you have just learned this one piece, it might still help you in your life. What is that? That is like we strongly believe that every human being has capacity to be discovered, to be mobilized, to be developed, to be utilized, right? for the individual's own good. So I have worked with people who are severely challenged in multiple ways. I've worked with children with like the uh, pervasive developmental disorder. I work with like seniors with uh, severe dementia. And I always insist that there is something with this individual, some strain, some capacity to be discovered. Uh, and I have got like, uh, I, I'm proud to say, you know, like um, uh, substantial evidence to back up this statement, right? And very often the capacity is there only when you look for it, right? So if you have someone coming in and you, all you see is, oh, this is a problem. Uh, this is like a person with a drinking problem, or this is a person with dementia, or this is a person who has been like depressed and unemployed for, for the longest, um, time in life and you do not see the potential, you do not see the capacity in this person, right? Uh, you have, like I would say, a lower probability of being able to help this person. And in this particular case, that person to be helped is you. So you almost owe it to yourself to discover your own capacity. So when you like, carrying on like this learning with us, you'll be learning uh, to apply the N3C perspective to your problem. And you'll be asking yourself, okay, so what is this problem telling me? So what needs are not being met? What circumstances that I'm being put in? So sometimes your circumstances can be a result of your problem, but sometimes your circumstances can be a cause of your problem, right? So say for example, when you're a child, right, you had abusive parents. And now as an adult, you have an abusive partner. So what, what are the connections there, right? So it could be both, right? So maybe like you're, you're, you're being abused as a child um, has contributed to a, a sense of insecurity, a lower uh, self-esteem, a fragile sense of self, and that makes you more vulnerable, right, in the relationship when you're bullied, pushed around, or, or abused emotionally, right? So that, those are your circumstances. But as you can see, those circumstances are connected uh, to some of the characteristics that you have developed uh, through 
your like earlier uh, phase in life. So that is like how you translate, you know, your problem. So like, so what are, what circumstances am I in? And then you're also looking at the characteristics that are connected to your problem, right? So say for example, I have a very low tolerance uh, of anxiety or stress. So when I get stressed out, uh, when I had anxiety, uh, I, I don't know how to manage it. So I drink or I do drugs or I like uh, block off the world and I just go online and play video games. Uh, that is like your characteristic. But Right. Remember, like your characteristics are developed right within a certain context, and if you understand that, you know, uh, you have a better sense, and very often you can have like a better control over your characteristics. And then, if you believe in what I just said about capacity, you can always develop new characteristics, right, that are more helpful, given. Uh, your current set of like circumstances and needs. So I hope you appreciate how these four factors, so, you know, like uh, needs, circumstances, characteristics, and capacity, how they interact with each other. Um, well, I can give you like endless examples on this, but uh, hopefully uh, when you move on with this uh, self-learning program, uh, you will gain an even uh, better appreciation uh, of their interconnections.